Welcome back to the Long Acres Finance channel. As dividend investors, we are always looking to find the best dividend stocks to invest in. That process typically starts with finding a quality business that has a strong history of dividend payments and growth. But finding great stocks to invest in is only half the battle. Once we do find a stock that we like, the toughest part of the process begins. Determining if the shares are trading for an attractive price. Valuing stocks is more art than science, but thankfully there are quantitative models that can assist us in this process. A valuation technique is limited by the number of assumptions that are required to be made. The more assumptions you make, the less reliable the outcome becomes. This is why I favor dividend yield theory that requires only one assumption, that the future dividend yield for a given stock will revert back to its long-term trailing average. My second favorite valuation technique, and the one I will talk about today, is the two-stage dividend discount model. As the name implies, this valuation technique is strictly for dividend-paying stocks, and more so for dividend stocks with histories of dividend growth. I'll explain how the model works, show you an example, and then we will talk about its application and limitations. As we walk through the model, you should pay attention to the assumptions I will make. These are the weakest points of this model, and they will have the largest impact on the final results. The two-stage dividend discount model is split into two stages. The first stage is the fast growth stage, and the second stage is the stable growth stage. It can also be referred to as the terminal growth stage. The model estimates the cash flow produced from future dividend payments, and discounts this cash flow to the net present value. The aim of the model is to come up with a fair price we are willing to pay today for the future dividend stream of a given stock. The assumptions we are required to make are the rate of growth of future dividends and our expected rate of return. The two pieces of information we need to run the model are the current annual dividend rate and the current share price of the stock. I think the easiest way to show you how this model works is with an example, so let's jump right in. I'll be running the two-stage dividend discount model for Texas Instruments. The current dividend rate for the stock is $4.60, and the current share price is about $184. Next, we need to come up with our expected rate of return. This rate of return will directly impact the fair price we are willing to pay for the given stock. You can either have a fixed rate of return expectation for all the stocks you invest in, or you can come up with them on a case-by-case -case basis. Perhaps there are a handful of stocks that you think are really strong businesses. You may be comfortable receiving a lower rate of return from them, say 8% per year. And if you are looking at a more speculative stock that you are not overly confident in, you may increase the rate of return to build a little cushion of safety. There is no right or wrong answer here, and the expected rate of return for everyone will be different. I'll show you the role this assumption plays on the final results at the end of the example. For now, I'll use 10% as the expected rate of return for Texas Instruments, a nice and even double-digit rate of return. The next piece of information we need to come up with is the dividend growth rate. And since we are working with a two-stage model, we will need to come up with two rates of dividend growth. The first will be the initial growth rate for the next couple of years, and the second will be a more stable, long-term growth rate that will be used after the first few years. Typically, the initial growth rate will be higher than the stable growth rate. Let's take a look at the dividend growth history for Texas Instruments to help create our assumptions. Looking back at the last two decades of dividend payments for Texas Instruments, we can see a strong history of continuous dividend growth. There are a handful of very nice dividend increases above 20%, and a few not-so-great increases below 10%. The 5-year dividend growth rate is right around 20%, but the rate of growth slowed down during the past two years. In 2020, Texas Instruments had a 15.89% dividend increase, and a 13.17% increase in 2021. It's too early to make an assumption about the 2022 dividend increase that will likely be announced in quarter 4. But based on the recent slowdown, I would come up with a conservative dividend growth rate of 11%. You can do as much or as little digging as you like to come up with these estimates. In the end, it's just an assumption. And if you're not comfortable coming up with your own estimates, you can use analyst forecasts. Based on Seeking Alpha, analysts are forecasting the 2022 annual dividend to be $4.70. This would be an 11.64% increase over the 2021 annual dividend of $4.21. For 2023, they are forecasting the annual dividend to be $5.14, which would be a 9.3% increase over 2022. So they are expecting the dividend growth rate to continue cooling off in the coming years. I will stick with my 11% dividend growth rate assumption for the first stage of our model. For the second stage, we need to come up with a stable long-term dividend growth rate. Given the company's long history of dividend payments and strong dividend growth, I would assume they can sustain a healthy dividend growth rate well into the future. I will use 7% as my assumption here, which to me is a good dividend growth rate for a mature company. When you are making your own assumptions, consider this. If you have high confidence the business will thrive in the future, be more bold. If your confidence isn't high, be more conservative. These two dividend growth assumptions also play a key role on the final results, as you will see in a minute or so. Okay, so now that we have all the necessary data and the assumptions, it's time to crunch the numbers. I will use a 5-year period for the first stage of the model. 
And here what we will do first is come up with the dividend payments for each of the next 5 years. We will do this by taking the current dividend rate and multiplying it by 1 plus the stage 1 dividend growth rate. The current dividend is $4.60 and if we multiply it by 1 plus 11% we come up with $5.11. Then we follow the same process now using $5.11 as a starting dividend. So we come up with a dividend of $5.67 for year 2, $6.29 for year 3, $6.98 for year 4, and $7.75 for year 5. These are the dividends we expect Texas Instruments to pay per share during the next 5 years. Now we need to account for the time value of money, because a dollar today isn't worth a dollar tomorrow. So what we need to do is discount these dividends back to present value. This is pretty simple. All we need to do is take the estimated dividend for each of the next 5 years, and divide it by 1 plus our expected rate of return to the power of the number of years. So for year 1, the dividend we expect to receive is $5.11. To compute the net present value, we divide 5.11 by 1.1 raised to the power of 1, and that equals $4.64. For year 2, we will divide $5.67 by 1.1 raised to the power of 2, since we are discounting 2 years here, and this equals $4.68, and so forth for each year. This is the first impact of our expected rate of return. A higher rate of return will discount the estimated dividends lower, and vice versa. Next, we move on to stage 2 of the model. And here we will compute the estimated dividend for year 6 using the stage 2 growth rate now. So we take the dividend from year 5 of $7.75 and multiply it by 1.07 to get 8.29 as the dividend in year 6. And we will use this dividend to compute a terminal value of the future dividend stream. To do this we take the dividend for year 6 which is $8.29 and we will divide it by the difference of our expected rate of return and the stage 2 growth rate. So that is 8.29 divided by 0.1 minus 0.7, or 0.3. But we also need to compute the net present value of the terminal value, and here we will use the same formula as we did for year 5. We will take the result of the terminal value and divide it by 1.1 to the power of 5. The terminal value for Texas Instruments is $171.66. To this we need to add the present value of the first 5 years of dividends, which is $23.63. Combined, the sum of the present value is $195.30. And this is the fair price we should be willing to pay for shares of Texas Instruments today, based on our growth and return assumptions. As of right now, shares of the stock trade for around $184. So the model tells us the stock is priced attractively in relation to our expectations. Now let me show you how the results change if we use a different expected rate of return. Let's say we want to get a rate of return of 11% instead of 10%. Now the fair price for the stock is $146.05, which is way lower than what the stock trades for today. But what if we are more bullish on the dividend growth rate? and we expect the stage 1 growth to be 18% instead of 11%, the fair price comes back up to $194.80, right about the same level as it was with the lower expected rate of return and the lower dividend growth assumption. If you recall, in the beginning I said the biggest weakness of any valuation technique are the assumptions you make. So be very careful with the assumptions you come up with, because this model is very sensitive as you just saw. Now that you have seen the model and understand how it works, let's talk about some of its limitations. The first limitation is the length of stage 1. I use the 5 year period in my example, but you can also use a shorter or longer period. The longer the period you use for stage 1, the higher the value of the investment will be, since we are implying a faster dividend growth rate for these years. Using a 3 to 5 year period is common practice, but you should think about what makes sense to you. Making assumptions further into the future is very difficult. The second limitation is that the dividend growth rate drops significantly from stage 1 to stage 2. This is unlikely to be the case in real life. Typically growth rates tend to fall gradually over time and not overnight. In my example, the dividend growth rate stayed fixed at 11% for 5 years, and then dropped to 7% in year 6. A more realistic scenario would be a slowly declining growth rate that would transition from 11% to 7% during this 5 year time period. I'll show you a variation to the two stage dividend discount model, called the H model, that accounts for this limitation. The final limitation is the fact that companies do not pay 100% of their free cash in dividends. At least the vast majority do not. Therefore, a dividend discount model doesn't factor in the residual cash a business uses to grow shareholder value. We could alternatively move to a discounted cash flow model, but it is a little bit more challenging to compute and requires more assumptions. In the end, there is no perfect valuation model, and you should use one that works best for you. Let's take a quick look at the H model that adjusts for the gradual decline of dividend growth. The model is exactly the same as the two-stage dividend discount model we just talked about, with the exception of the stage 1 dividend growth rate. In the H model, we compute the difference in growth between stage 1 and stage 2, and we use this difference to progressively discount the dividend growth rate in stage 1 for years 2 through 5. In our example, the stage 1 dividend growth rate is 11%, and stage 2 is 7%.
with the difference being 4%. If we divide 4% by the number of years in stage 1, which is 5 years, we come up with 0.8%. Now we will start lowering the dividend growth rate by 0.8% for year 2 and all subsequent years. This way the dividend growth rate moves from the initial 11% in year 1, down to 7.8% in year 5, and ultimately to the terminal growth rate of 7% in year 6 and beyond, giving us a nice and gradual transition between the two growth rates. The impact of this gradual decline in the dividend growth rate is a final present value of $182.56 for Texas Instruments, which is about $13 lower than the final present value from the dividend discount model. Ultimately, dividend growth rates differ for each business, and they often don't follow measurable patterns of change. I wouldn't spend too much time fine-tuning your assumptions. You are far better off spending more time looking for good businesses than trying to compute exact fair values. That's it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more content. See you next time.